It didn't break. We're not done yet. Why would you say that? Oh, see, when you say stuff like that, it breaks. My bad. morning I was not gonna vlog today but uh, apparently we are working this weekend so this is my morning off chores but I'm gonna be taking over from Mark uh, he is going to rake our hay I thought while I was um, waiting for him to start the field I would pick some sweet corn we picked some the other day it was not great. I think we're actually past. We get too busy. I don't even know why we attempted to grow a garden and I'm so embarrassed to turn the camera right now but you may as well see what happens when the Brocks take on a huge garden. Are you ready for this? That is what three inches of rain does. I think next year we're gonna do this garden a bit different. Hello! Look at those! They're actually growing! Why hello! Pretty little thing. Look! Oh. another one! Okay, pumpkins are growing. So I got everything picked up. That's all I have for beans. It looks like there was a lot, but they're not. Um, and these are pole beans, and I'm not a huge fan, but look at the size of them. Crazy. And then I got all my onions gathered up. So I'll put them in the kind of in our basement in the dark corner. I don't know what to do with them. We don't really have cold storage. And then I picked all our sweet corn, which are not, looks really good in this camera, but they're not the greatest. But. So that's what I was able to uh, salvage. Now I'm gonna see if Mark needs me. So apparently I do not have to take over because he's almost done. I think he's just on the headlands now. See how dry this is. So it's drying on top but underneath is not and we want to bail tomorrow i don't know so what he's doing is just he's putting two rows into one like side by side and trying to get it up off that wet ground the problem is our mornings have been really really not foggy but yeah uh, it might dry the good thing is there's not much of it so if we get some wind today which we're not supposed to. So the good thing is we're wrapping this hay. Uh, so we will bale it tomorrow, wrap it. And the wrapping, um, we've got, we've had really good luck at that 20% moisture of the hay bales. It seems to really preserve nice in, in the wrap. Uh, yet too, too high, then it's more like baleage. Well, we've never gotten any lower than 20, so I have no idea what that would be. I guess that would be just like dry hay, but it seems to preserve okay at 20. Uh, the problem with that moisture though is I can't really put it in my feed mixer. That's that's the time that it gets really ropey. So uh, it'd be sweet if we could get two more really good sunny days on it. Like if Dan doesn't come till later tomorrow, but it's a pretty big field just to bail in a few hours. So it is what it is. We're chasing the, we're just chasing the rain now because it's supposed to rain Monday. Here comes Mark with the rake. We are flooded everywhere. And it won't stop raining. Oh. 
I know I joke about hay and that I have bad luck, but this is so upsetting. Like, I feel sick. Oh, we haven't had this much rain all summer. 40%. Wow. Well, I stopped pouting and I'm touring the hay field. The, the good news is fourth cut's coming in, coming in really good. There is standing water in our field, which I've never yet seen in our whole time of growing hay, which has been since like 2013. There's a lot of water. Yikes. Yikes. Well, it's the next day, so it's Tuesday. It's kind of windy. I was too scared to come back on yesterday afternoon. The weather forecast went again crazy, and they called for 80% chance of like, I don't even know what it was, a lot of rain. Uh, part of that system that hit Iowa so hard, Iowa and I think Illinois, uh, which I'm so sorry, you guys. I feel so guilty complaining about stupid rain when I see the devastation of the US this morning when I turn on Twitter, I'm like, oh my goodness. So for all you guys, our Southern neighbors, I'm so unbelievably sorry for being such, such a wuss when it comes to rain on hay. That's like, it means nothing. Like hay is replaceable, hay will grow again, but to lose all those grain bins and your storage and your equipment and your sheds and your homes and your animals, I'm just like, oh, like my, I felt sick all morning and I actually have not been on social media just because I, I feel horrible. Um, the good news is we missed it. So the weather forecaster once again was wrong, but in a good way. So we did miss that rain, which means our hay has a fighting chance of drying out before Friday. My baler also called yesterday and said, I'm going on holidays. So we, uh, the, the family that we're helping out with uh, baling more straw for, they're actually gonna come and bale hay for us. And that's after they'd already baled their own, took off all the equipment, he said yes. So uh, we have everything now lined up for Friday. I still have to call my wrapper, but I think he'll be okay. Um, so I'm just checking out the ground. It's still not fit for equipment. Uh, Mark's hoping to get in here tomorrow morning to rake, and then it'll have Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday morning to dry out really good. So we we lucked out. The weather is kind of hot and sunny for the rest of the week and I'm so unbelievably grateful and um, I just I still feel really bad for for everyone else that's hurting. All right let's take a look at this hay and see if we'll be good for tomorrow. I cannot believe how much the fourth cut's growing. <laughs> so we got to get this up. We got to get it lifted and off the ground so it will dry. So we're going to rake it one more time. Uh, every time you rake it, you do kick up more leaves. But uh, yeah, so it's already like, it's pretty good. But this isn't a real, I'm going to smell it. It doesn't smell terrible. So anyways, but this is a thin spot. The water has receded. It was right there. Uh, so it's gone this morning, which is good. So now we just need the sun and the wind, which is just coming out now. It has been overcast all day. So it's just clear skies right, right there. So I just need this stuff to dry up. So you can see it's still, still pretty tacky. Patience, patience, my friends. Good morning, another day of drying, hopefully. Mark is out bright and early, while the dew is still a little bit, well, a lot, on these windrows to rake it one more time. And uh, it's looking like another few days of really nice weather, so I think we're pretty lucky to salvage this hay, if all goes according to plan. So, this is what it looks like now. So we're just trying to lift it and fluff it so it can get aired out but actually it's, it's only a little bit damp it's not even that bad so 
since hay is on hold, there is still a ton of work that I still have to do. I weighed a bunch of lambs last week, so I didn't think there'd be many ready this week, but I looked at the markets and I have a feeling um, we're into the last couple weeks of some stronger prices. So I'm wondering if I should uh, weigh, try to get my over 100 pounders out the door and then maybe even, I don't usually do this, but maybe take the next the next lighter group out. So maybe, I'm thinking maybe take 95 pounds and over today and see how many I get and then ship them tonight to the stockyard. I'm just afraid we're starting to get into some softer prices, I think, I'm not sure. Uh, we just finished our latest uh, ethnic holiday here on, I think it was July 31st. I just don't wanna get stuck missing a week because my lambs weren't quite ready. Uh, so I'm gonna see what I have. I'll run them over the scale and uh, and I guess I'll let you guys know what I have for for lambs. Uh, yeah, so if they're same same deal as every other video, if they're over, I guess I'm gonna I'm gonna try 95 pounds today and if they're over 95, I'm gonna throw them in here. Not throw, but place them in here and then tonight, I might grab the trailer and take them to the sales barn. If there's not enough, then I'll just keep them over here for another week and then weigh again next week. The problem is I'm in a bit of an overlap because of my New Zealand trip still in March. I had to, I had to lamb these guys out in April. And what's happening is now we're into this bottleneck of my June lambs are ready to wean and I don't have room over here. So I either have to, um, take some of my ewe lambs and take them over to the, the big barn before their second vaccination. Or I have to maybe just sacrifice uh, some of my market weights and go for a lighter group. Um, I knew this was gonna happen. I was just hoping, I was hoping they grow a little faster. And the problem is it's been too hot. So their gains haven't been what they probably should be. And I kind of knew that was gonna happen. All right, I'm just gonna set up a session here. Bluetooth going. And now I'm just gonna scan, anyone that's 95 pounds or over, I'm gonna scan the tag, and then that will collect all its data. There we go. Okay, so that was 98 and a half. So I'm gonna scan. 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 So that one, I'll just show you the info that I have collected. So it was born April 6th, it was a quad, a ewe lamb, and the overall average daily gain was about 0.7, so that's from birth, and 0.8 since the last time I weighed her, which was probably when I was, when I was doing um, my ewe lamb evaluation, so probably about four weeks ago. So in the last four weeks, it's gained 0.8 a day. So I'm gonna probably ship her. 
And I likely didn't keep her for a replacement because I, I really am trying to get rid of the Ile de France as the sire. Uh, it was a good cross. The mum is a good cross, but I want to keep the mum as that. Uh, so the Ile de France and the Suffolk I kept as market, market lambs. Okay, so now I'm just going to open the door and let it out. Just like so. Look who it is, you guys. It's Rusty. Hello, baby. I know you're not going to be heavy. Yeah, you're just a wee little lad. Nope. Where you go? Rusty? Where you go? Where you go? Where you go? You guys, I am still working on someone to take Rusty because I know no one wants me to sell him. I'm working on it. Hey, you guys, do you remember that lamb that I fixed her leg during, uh, so that's her right there. Uh, where is she? Right, set. the other way. She's kind of hiding. Right there. So it's a, I mean, it's walking. It's a bit, that's her right there. Anyway, it's fixed. So it's a little cockeyed, but she can put full weight on it, which is good. Sometimes it's hard to keep track. Once they come into this barn and they're, they look like all the rest of them, then I kind of forget. But as I, as I put her over the scale, I'm like, that's, that's the little ewe lamb that I fixed her leg. So always, always try because it might not be 100% like perfect looking, but if there is no pain and they're walking with no limp, then you're doing good. So kind of nice to see that. All finished, we had 25 ready to go. So that's 25 lambs over 95. Uh, I'll just tell you how many I had. Uh, the minimum weight was 96 pounds and the max was 107 so the average weight of this group is 100 pounds uh, so I'm taking them tonight so it's the night before so they'll be a shrink so likely the average weight tomorrow on sale they'll probably be about 95 pounds that's about seven pounds lighter than I usually go it's usually around 102 103 with shrink uh, when they go through the through the ring so yeah, they, the sales barn, when I say the sales barn, it's, a, it's an auction. So they will take the group and they'll take a weight on the, on the whole group, I think, unless they separate it into weight class. But these guys are pretty close that they'll probably just go in as one group. And then there's buyers there. And most of those buyers are probably buying for um, kind of abattoirs and processing plants in and around Toronto, because that's our biggest customer. Uh, so yeah. So pretty big pen after all I wasn't sure there'd be that many so uh, the rest are in the closest ones we're about 94 90 to 94 pounds so that'll take a couple weeks yet to get up to uh, over that hundred pound mark I would I would think in this heat so that means probably next week I won't have to ship however I'm gonna have to figure out what I'm gonna do with these lambs that need to be weaned so we have time but time is ticking all right I'm gonna clean up and catch up with you in a sec. Okay, I have everything cleaned up, and I have the ramp set up, and I have to kind of reconfigure my whole handling system. That's one thing about it. Uh, when I'm weighing and shipping on the same day, I gotta move everything around. So now I have the chute going this way, and then a little handling system here, and then the drop pen there.
Well, I'm locked and loaded and ready to go, just sitting in my lane way. Today's been a productive day, actually. Even when uh, we're waiting on a crop or something to do, there's always a million other things on our to-do list, so uh, happy to get this done. There is a bottle lamb on this load who I've kind of become really attached to, so this is the worst part of my job. I know a lot of people don't like this part of the job and I have to admit, I try not to create a bond with any of these lambs because I know the destination and especially if it's a ram lamb uh, because I can't, for genetics, I can't keep all these lambs. The billies I can kind of keep because I can really keep my eye on them because they're um, you know, they're a different color and I know they're, I know the sire. The other ones, I don't know. Like I just, I don't have enough data on them and I don't really know their records. And so I can't really keep them because I really need these animals to perform well. And that usually means bringing in genetics that are tested and are true. And uh, people work really, really hard in creating really good breeding stock. And I also want to support them. So I try not to keep my own rams back for that, for that reason, uh, just to keep that genetic pool fresh and clean and, and quite honestly, better performing than mine. So that's why I don't keep them. And I know a lot of you guys grow attached to the lambs too and it's a really tough one i'm going to have a really hard day when rusty has to go the good thing with rusty is he has not been that friendly until just like the last two weeks all of a sudden he is showing some enthusiasm towards me which not gonna lie kills me a little bit so anyway shipping day is always the hardest day uh however if i don't ship them i can't have sheep because we can't afford to feed them if I fall in love with all of them and keep them. The only way I can get through a day like this is to know that I've given them a really good life. Anyway guys, thank you for coming along with our crazy hay days. And I'm really hoping and praying the next time you see me, we will be baling hay and life will be back to normal and third cut will hopefully be done. <sighs> Just thanks for hanging out with me again and we will hopefully see you Friday. Take care.